coming? Okay, first off, uh, Five Tech is not necessarily or should not be considered necessarily a performance uh, upgrade. Five Tech is basically a modification that is done in order to make the iTech system less problematic, easier to work on, and less likely to leave you on the side of the highway. So what I've got right here is a complete stock iTech system, and I've got one here that I'm assembling right now that I'm going to kind of go over uh, what kind of modifications I'm making and where everything goes. This is the coolant temperature sensor that sends a signal to the ECM, tells the ECM whether the engine is warmed up or not. You can't even see this when the intake is on the truck. Uh, this is on the underside of the intake. If you your thermostat housing, uh, you know, your power steering mounts here, your air conditioning mounts over here, and this is a real booger to get to. So what we're gonna do, you, you actually have to leave this in here because this is a water passage, but uh, it's always a good time to get a new one anyway because these are prone to failure and they can cause all sorts of problems. So first off, go buy yourself a new coolant temperature sensor. Uh, another thing that we're going to do is these water hoses here are very prone to splitting and uh, leaving you on the side of the highway with an overheated motor. And again, this is really difficult to change with this on the motor. Here's another one, and here's another one. We're going to be eliminating all of these. We're not going to have water running through the bottom of the intake anymore. This is designed in order to basically uh, heat the motor, bring it up to temperature faster, and that's all done for emissions. If you've got an automatic, there would typically be a temperature switch here, uh, which can be eliminated. This is where the sensor usually goes that uh, sends the signal to the gauge, tells your temperature gauge what the temperature is. Uh, we're relocating that, so you can pull that out. Uh, this is a thermal vacuum switch here, which operates the EGR and uh, we're gonna be eliminating that also. And uh, if you choose to run EGR, we're just gonna run that directly off of the throttle. This is the idle air control valve. And again, this is something that is nearly impossible to get to. Uh, these are prone to going bad. Sometimes you hear guys talk about putting sea foam or PV blaster down in there to get these things operational, but we're going to be relocating this to a much more accessible location. Another issue here is your igniter. This is an interesting little doodad which is not even mentioned that I can find anywhere in any publication whatsoever. Uh, I cannot find it mentioned at all in the factory service manual, troubleshooting guide, or anywhere. Uh, if anybody has anything, a picture or a diagram or wiring diagram or any documentation of the existence of this part, please forward it to me. I would like to see that. Um, this is the igniter for the ignition system. It's impossible to see. It's very difficult to get to, and this is the number one problem when you have no spark. And it, like I said, it's not mentioned anywhere, it's not documented, and so you wouldn't know it exists, and then it, if you did find out about it, it's a real bear to get to. So we're going to be relocating this also. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the wires that go to these things, all of these wires right here, and we're going to reroute them back up to the top. Okay, so what you're left with is an intake that looks like this, pretty stripped. So you can see the difference between this and this. Okay, so then the question becomes, where do all these things go? Okay, well first off, we're gonna take the wiring for the igniter and we are going to run it up here and we're gonna place it next to the coil where it should have been anyway. This is the throttle position sensor and this is a, a unused uh, EGR temperature. The coolant temperature sensor is relocated to the top of the thermostat housing. Uh, removed that thermal vacuum valve out of there. You don't need that. This coolant temperature sensor is not an absolute perfect fit into this boss right here. So what I did is I got a 3 8 to quarter inch adapter. I uh, just got that at Home Depot. And uh, even still, the threads to the coolant temperature sensor are not perfect to this because I think this is metric and this is standard, but if you put some uh, Teflon tape or I use this um, copper coat gasket, this is for sensors and stuff, um, it'll seal up nice and tight and give you no problems. And uh, I've moved the uh, temperature gauge sending unit right here. I've had to drill and tap a hole on this. Some of these thermostat housings are actually equipped with a little bleeder valve right here. And uh, if it has that, you can remove that bleeder valve and this sending unit will just screw right in there. Okay, now typically you've got a hose that runs off of the back of the thermostat housing, and that's the one that runs down here uh, and provides water to this lower section. 
what we're going to do is we are going to take that water line and we're just going to run a long hose down here and this will connect back to the heater. Typically this goes, goes from here, it comes down here to the bottom of the intake, it runs down through the lower part of the intake and then exits here and goes to the heater core. Instead we're bypassing all that, we're coming right off the back of the thermostat housing and, and we're just going to run right down between two and three there and we're just going to run right out the back and then we will just take this hose and run it onto the heater core. Okay so now on your throttle you've got two water lines that come out of the back of that and those are the ones that come over here and here and those are essentially uh, just lines that feed warm water up, up to, to the, the throttle in order to uh, warm the air going through this thing again to help warm this thing up. So I'm just going to leave those alone. You can just leave those uncapped and then there are two vacuum lines here that come out of the bottom of the throttle. These are very difficult to get to. You can't see them. You don't even know that they exist unless you've seen them on a diagram or, you know, taken one of these things apart or whatever. Um, you can cap both of those off or if you're going to run EGR, you'll leave one of these caps off and you'll use that. This is ported vacuum and that'll be supplied to the back pressure transducer in order to activate the uh, EGR valve. Okay, now typically you've got a uh, bypass that comes off here off the throttle and goes down to the idle air control valve. Uh, we're going to reroute that, so we're going to take this and we're going to just grab a hold of it and you can turn this thing. So uh, we'll take that thing and we'll turn it up like this, so that instead of facing down, it's facing up and it's going to come over the top of the iTech. When this thing is complete, it looks sort of like this. And what I've done here is I've got the igniter mounted right up here. There was just conveniently two little bosses where I could uh, bolt that in. There's this ground strap right here. Normally this thing mounts back here, uh, comes off the back of the head here and runs up to the valve cover here. I've just relocated this thing from the stud here up to the igniter, kind of just help ensure ground to the top of the valve cover and uh, the igniter. Got the coolant temperature sensor mounted right here. Uh, you'll have to plug in the uh, yellow wire for your gauge right there. I've relocated the idle air control valve right here to the front with the plug there. Come off the top of the throttle with this bypass hose here and then it routes right around to its original location right here. Uh, this is an intake port for your charcoal canister. I've capped that off because I'm not running that. Um, all of these other ones related to AC and the uh, the old thermal vacuum valve that used to be plugged in here since it's gone also cap that off. This one uh, used to run the uh, smog pump over there and then this stuff uh, goes over to the fender well. I'm not running any of that so that's all capped off. Uh, this goes to AC. It's capped off as well. Okay, this one I am still running EGR, so what I've done is I came off the bottom of this throttle, as you may recall, with a vacuum line, and I've run it straight over here to the back pressure transducer, and it's hooked up just like factory, like it normally would. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, as you'll notice, the top of the iTech has become a little more busy, um, but the key element here is that the bottom has been stripped. You don't have all that stuff down here that you can't get to and you can't see anymore. Um, and then here's that water line that I was showing you earlier that'll come back and go to the heater core. Okay, so when it's all done and installed on the vehicle, looks like this. basically it. Any questions, send me an email or give me a phone call.